Hello guys, got a little video here for you today on a little custom Red Wolf project and it's one I thought would make quite a nice special video as this will be the one year anniversary of the channel. So what we're going to be doing is taking a standard Red Wolf, stripping all the action and redoing it in silver, putting a pick rail on top, making a custom shroud. I've already got a removable bottle adapter from another Red Wolf build that I'm going to be putting on the front and I've also got a really nice painted stock that we're going to stick it in. So the first operation is to strip the block down and we're just doing that in some caustic soda and getting it stripped down to bare aluminium. Once we've got it stripped down we can move on to the pick rail. Now I didn't make this pick rail, someone made a load up on a CNC mill and I bought a couple lengths just to have around the workshop for projects like this. We could make pick rails on a manual machine but it'd just be an awful lot of work. So just having it lying around in blanks is quite handy and as always with the mill first operation is just to centre up the pick rail. And that's just held in a pick rail jig that I made up. And the first operation once it's centred up is just to take a bit of material off the back of the pick rail. It's quite tall at the moment and we want the pick rail to be nice and low to the block. So we're just taking a few mil off the bottom. Whilst I'm roughing out some material I just thought I'd talk briefly about the Red Wolf build itself. Now originally this build was going to be for someone else. A good friend of ours, Mr Mark Janana, who is unfortunately no longer with us. My dad painted up a Red Wolf stock for him. And a little time after that we got our Red Wolf. We played around with it quite a bit, put a pick rail on it, put a removable bottle adapter on the front and was messing around with the programming. And a little while after that we started talking about a custom action. Mark really liked anything unique and he always liked to have the first of everything. So the idea of a silver block popped up to go in the custom painted stock. So I wouldn't call this a tribute build as I think that's a bit too morbid. But this build is definitely with Mark in mind. So we've put all the bells and whistles on this one and it should turn out to be a really nice gun. But back on with the build and once the pick rail's to height we've got to mill a slot out for the dovetail to go in. So this slot corresponds to the smallest part of the dovetail and we're going to be using a 60 degree dovetail cutter just to go along the sides cutting out the dovetail to the right width. And since we've got the block we're just going to be checking the fit of the dovetail against the block. You can measure dovetails and cut them that way using pin gauges and such but since we've got the block and it's quite easy to check the fit against the dovetail we're just going to be cutting it like that. So the first operation is to take the bulk of the material out just with a standard end mill and then we're going to be coming back with a dovetail cutter cleaning up the sides and getting it to the width of the dovetail. Once the width's been established what we can do is raise the cutter up and cut the bottom edge of the dovetail to get it to size. And once it's finished and cut to height we can just about get the block on. With a dovetail in this application, we really do want a nice tight fit. If you can slide the dovetail on and off easily, it's too loose. Once the dovetail's cut in the bottom of the pick rail, we've measured up the block and just cut the pick rail into two pieces. We're still a little oversized on the length, so we've got to trim that down in a minute. But for now, I'm just comparing it to my other Red Wolf with a pick rail on top, because I want the pick rail roughly in the same place. So once we know where it wants to be, we can cut it to length and start working on the decorative features like the rounded corners. Now I'm rounding the corners off with a corners radius end mill just to get a rounded edge that matches the block. Once the pick rail is ready to be mounted, we need to drill and tap the block for the securing screws. And I'm going to be doing that with three countersunk M3 screws. And I've got the spacing so that the screws are between the pick rail slots. So we're drilling and tapping the block first, just using a form tap. And these are through holes. Once the holes in the block are done, we can do the corresponding holes in the pick rail. And the rearmost hole is this screw that holds the cocking lever on. And then the other three are for the countersunk screws. Countersunk screws are done so that they're just under flush. That means when we go to put our scope mounts on there, we don't have to worry about the screws interfering with any of our scope mounts. And then lastly, we can just do some decorative angles just to break the edges up a bit and make it look a little more finished. These are easier to do when the pick rail is actually mounted on the block. I did the front one off camera but it was just the same operation. Although in the front one we had the two barrel retention grub screws to factor in. But other than that it was pretty much identical. And then you can see there the new style magazine fits in there no problem. And we've also kept the correct Picatinny spacings. So that's it for the pick rail. We can move on to the shroud now. What I've got in the lathe is some inch thin walled aluminium tube. And we're just turning the OD down to 24mm. Just off camera, we turned a true spot on one end to hold in the 3 jaw chuck. And on the other end, we cut a 30 degree taper so that we can mount a pipe center in there. And this is just plain turning. Although we will have to come back and thread the ends. But before we thread the tube, I'm going to be making the end caps. I've already made the front one, so we're going to be making the back one for the camera. And the first thing we're going to do is turn the profile and then thread it. 
This one will have some grub screws on the back, so the back's a little fatter, and we're going to be using a spin indexer for those, but you'll see that in a minute. The thread we're going to be putting on it is an M22.8, so not a standard size thread, but we're using a standard pitch of 1mm. It's a funny size thread because the shroud wall is quite thin, and I just went a little undersized to give the shroud wall a little more meat. The last thing we want is for this to blow apart when we start shooting it, so making the shroud wall a little thicker doesn't hurt anything. And then once it's threaded, we can bore out the centre to 13mm. I've already got a barrel for this rifle. It's not a barrel I've done to be honest, so I don't know how well it's going to shoot, but we'll give it a go. Worst comes to worst, I can always rebarrel it. But this one was machined ready to fit a Red Wolf. So we're just going to be using this one for now. And then next, we're going to be moving the part over to the spin indexer in the mill to put the grub screw holes in it. So these holes are going to be 120 degrees apart. So this tool allows you to accurately index a part in one degree increments. So on the outside, the large ring, we have 0 to 35 measured. And these are the degrees in tens. We have 10 degrees, 20 degrees, all the way around to 350 degrees. And then 0, which acts as 0 and 360. Just below that, we have another set of numbers with a number of pin holes in them. And these pins give us the 1 degree increments. So if we wanted 31 degrees, say, we would move the ring round to number 3 and then put the pin in the 1 position. That would index the part 31 degrees. However, we want 120 degrees of rotation, so we're going to be using the 0 mark and also the 12 mark. Once we've got all that figured out, we can drill and tap the holes for M3 grub screws. And then using a slightly bigger drill, we can come back and deburr the holes. So that's the back piece of the shroud done. And now we can thread the tube to suit our end caps. First thing is to just bore out the centre, make it round. Same thread as we've done the end caps, obviously, M22.8. It's quite a thin wall, this tube, so I'm just taking really nice fine passes and checking the end caps on with each pass. Now the shroud would be quite boring as just a lump of tube. So what we're going to be doing, just to break it up a little, is adding some slots on the back and a little pattern on the front of the shroud. There's going to be three slots in each side on the back, and we need to align those so that they're vertical when the grub screws are pointing downwards. So we screwed the end cap on, marked where it come, and then indexed the shroud in the spin indexer 90 degrees from that red mark. That just ensures when we screw the shroud on that the three slots will be aligned with the side of the rifle, and the grub screws will be on the bottom. And to cut them, we're just using a 3mm end mill. Overall, I want the slots 4mm wide, so we're just stepping half a mil over in the X, just to widen the slots out a little. Next, we move on to the other end, the muzzle end of the shroud, and we're going to be cutting a nice spiral pattern in this end. So I've got my little list of numbers there, and a nice chart, so that I don't get anything mixed up. And we're going to be doing rings of 6 holes, and then doing the next set of holes offset at 15 degrees. And then for the very end of the shroud, because we can't do through holes, we're just using a ball ended end mill just to make some nice little indentations. When the shroud's finished, I'll put some stainless steel mesh on the inside just to make it look a little more finished. All right then, fellas, so this is the finished article. This is the red, white and blue stock that my dad painted. It originally was a walnut just a standard red wolf stock that Mark had hydro dipped in sort of this white carbon fibre pearlescence type stuff. And then my dad just came over this with an airbrush, put an American flag design on there. And it really does look good in the flesh. It's using house of colour paint, so everything really does pop in the sunlight. Candy apple red on the stripes and cobalt blue, I think, on the back piece. So there's the block all silvered up. Just painted it with silver paint and it came out alright. Really does match the stock quite nicely. Cock and handle, we made up a mock heritage cock and handle for it, I'll show you that in a minute. There's the slots in the shroud with the stainless steel mesh on there. We put the 580 bottle on it, that's off the M3. We've obviously got the removable bottle adapter in the end there so we can screw bottles on and off as we need to. Is the fifth. This one's the 580. Coming along to the end of the shroud. That's the little pattern in the end with the end cap. Just a nice plain end cap. I didn't want to put a half inch UNF on there. I think the red wolves look best when it's just a shroud. The barrel is slightly shorter. As I said before it was 
one that was already machined up is cut down so it's about there and the rifle is really quite quiet with that long shroud believe it or not this stock was supposed to be going to the EBR competition it was supposed to be going to Dave Calder who shoots for Daystate but unfortunately the stock got turned away at customs so it never made it there we also made Dave a new cocking arm for the Red Wolf better suited to speed shooting I'll put some pictures up so you can see what I mean but the lever is further back so there's less movement to cock the rifle here's the heritage cocking handle or the one we made up to look like a heritage cocking handle magazine it's one of the new style magazines with the flip out back And obviously we got our Picatinny rail on the bottom of the stock. And that's about it guys. I'm really quite happy with the way it came out. It looks quite unique. It's not going to be to everyone's taste. But it's definitely going to be unique. And I think Mark would have really, really liked it. While we're having a look over the rifle, just wanted to say thanks to everyone that has subscribed. It's the one year anniversary of the channel today and I really can't believe how far we've got just in a year of doing the YouTube thing. For the next year I'm really going to try and make the videos a little better. Try and make them a bit better edited and really bring some interesting stuff. There's loads of things I still want to make, still want to show you guys. So next year should be even better. Right then guys, so I hope you enjoyed that one, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.